Hi, I'm Troy with Wines, Pines, and Canines. Last week our emphasis was how we prepare the inside of the camper to get ready to go out of town. Well, this week is my video, and I'm going to talk about all the tools I bring and the ways I prepare and pack and organize and get all my stuff together that I'm responsible for when we get ready to go out of town. And we're going to wrap up some things we talked about last week, some of the modification and hacks we're doing inside the kitchen area, especially what we're going to do with that trash can. This is a great couples camper and it's 20 foot long and it has really good storage in here. But one of the things you have to do periodically, and I do it every spring, is I go through all these storage containers and start becoming more efficient with what I'm actually using and making sure what I take on the road is actually needed. Right now, one of the most successful and key features to being organized in a camper that is this small is you have to keep everything coiled up nice and tight. You've got to keep everything in storage containers. You have to make sure there's not just stuff everywhere. These products I found on Amazon, this is made by a company called Rapid. These are Velcro straps that I use, and I'm using more and more to wrap just about anything up, like coax, extension cords, the power cables. These are great. All right, when you get on the road and you want to go places, don't ever forget to bring an extension cord. It'll be critical to running a secondary power line from the pedestal if you want to run something outside in your camp. Get a nice long length of coax. That way you can hook up to um, cable or satellite if the RV park you're staying at has some. This is something I'd always recommend. This is a 50 amp to 30 amp adapter. Sometimes you might go to an RV park and they don't have any spots that are 30 amp that would be sized for my camper, but they do have larger sites. Sometimes they'll have some availability for you and if you have a 50 to 30, you can still use these sites with no problems. And this is one of my favorites. For your uh, relatives that don't realize you're staying in their driveway for the rest of creation, this is a 30 amp to 110 adapter. So you can run an extension cord up underneath their garage door and you'll never know. Lastly, probably the most critical piece of this uh, ensemble, this is a surge protector. This is what you need to have hooked up at the pedestal before you run power to your RV park, regardless of the size or style. What you don't want to do is have a surge come through the RV park and really damage the sensitive electronics in your camper and just let you know by a series of lights that are illuminated on the face if it's actually wired properly. Now in keeping with the notion that I'm trying to be as efficient as I can within space, just like everybody else that got into camping a couple years ago in my previous camper, I went like everybody else down to Walmart and bought the water hose. It was terrible. It was hard to keep coiled up. It was hard to store. So I bought these zero G hoses. These guys work like a champ. They're almost three years old. I've had them across this country and when I'm not using them, they go in these containers. They go into storage. No problems whatsoever. Now on this potable water line, I've got a 40 PSI pressure reducing valve on the end of that. I've got a quick couple that I use. And I also use this inline filter right at the pedestal to filter the water before it gets to the camper. Our camper has a great filter on the inside, but I think twice as much filtration is probably a good idea, so that's what I do. Now I love camping, and one of the things that helps me to enjoy camping is being prepared to repair something if I have to, worst case, or just generally operate the camp when we move from location to location as efficiently as possible. On this table is a whole bunch of things that I use. These are what I would consider non-discretionary. These are absolute must-haves. Screwdrivers, wire cutters, torpedo levels, razor knives, channel locks. Very typical stuff that you can find at any local hardware store, but you really should take with you. Also, when you're walking the dog at night or hitching up the trailer in the dark, I highly recommend you have one of these headlamps. They're very inexpensive. You don't have to spend a lot of money, but I'd recommend you always keep one of these inside the camper at night if you have to need it. I have sockets. I tap sockets um, in the back of the truck to do several things. I have to have a socket that fits the lugs on my tires. I have to double check the torque on them, make sure the tires are nice and tight. I also have to be able to retighten and per periodically check my weight distribution hitch to make sure everything's fully operational and as it should be. 
I keep a couple extra sockets in case I have to manually bring in the awning or bring up or down the power tongue jack in case either one of these electronic devices fail on me in the middle of a trip. Folks, this goes without saying, always have duct tape. One of the most important things you can take with you. This is a very inexpensive uh, torque wrench from Harbor Freight. I think it was about $30 or $40. I use this to double check the torque on the lug nuts of my camper to make sure it's safe and make sure that everything's within range. Sometimes they loosen up. I always keep spare fuses. You never know, probably don't need this many, but I always keep a small container of fuses. I keep some wire dikes in case I have to make an electrical change or solve a problem. And I always have an electrical meter so I can check the amperage on my battery to make sure it's still operating and make sure what it says on the battery is exactly what it says on my uh, power readout inside. Here's another DeWalt tool that I bring. Now this is not the biggest drill I have. This is just a drill. It's 12 volt. It's just sized just right for slowly and gently taking the stabilizers up on your camper. And the reason I choose this particular battery in size is because the drill is just big enough and these batteries also fit the charger that I have for my other DeWalt battery and the other things that I use. So I don't have to bring two different chargers. This little fitting right here goes on the stabilizers. And the stabilizers go up and down. As long as I'm gentle, it's a lot easier to use a drill to level, not level, excuse me, stabilize your camper using a drill than it is having to use that manual hand crank. Now here are a couple more items that I generally bring because I've learned as I go along. Twice in, this, in my camping experience I've gone to a campground and somebody has left their awning out. The wind has caught the awning and in fact their camping trip is destroyed because they can't get the awning back in and it's a whole hot mess. Highly recommend you bring ratcheting straps and bungees with you. If something should break or something should happen you can use ratcheting straps and bungees to solve a temporary problem, get you back on the road where you don't have to waste any more time than you already have. Now here is a Walmart pool noodle. Costs about a dollar. You cut it in half, cut a slit down the middle, stick it on this awning, and when this arm comes up, you won't be like me. Come out of your camper, walk into this arm, and then uh, knock yourself silly. Pool, uni pool noodle looks kind of goofy, but it looks better than a sore head. Here's something else. You never know. This is a foldable, extendable shovel. Sometimes you might be on the side of the road, have to change a tire, and because of the lay of the land, you might have to do a little digging. Sometimes you have to put water in your camper, the storage tank. You use a funnel like this to stick in the hole and help make it easier on yourself. This is something I use from time to time if I have to wash something, and it stores very easily because of its size. It's a collapsible bucket. Now when you go on the road, there's certain things you have to take with you no matter what. There's some things you're going to want to take with you just because they make your experience just that much better. These three DeWalt tools fit into that category. I use this blower to blow all the leaves off my camp, but more importantly, I use it to blow off my awning and my slide. So you don't have to roll leaves up in your awning and be stuck with the outline of brown tannins for the rest of your lifetime owning this camper. This little fan will run all night on a heavy duty DeWalt battery keeps everybody nice and cool when you don't really want air, but you want a little airflow. And this light has a directional light. If I have to crawl underneath the camper in the middle of the night or do anything in the dark, I'm just very grateful I've got this light with me. One battery fits them all. We are always messing with this camper. And this morning I did something I'm pretty happy with. I always had a situation of trying to store my um, campsite rug that we put at the base of the steps. So I went to uh, Lowe's Home Improvement bought two four inch pipe straps, used these tech screws, which are metal to metal fasteners, and screwed them into the steel piping in the overhead of our storage unit. We're able to take our rug now and keep it nice and out of the way. Now on this side of the camper, we are all business. In this black container, I keep my sanitary line support. I don't know what you call these things, but they help keep the sanitary line kind of elevated. Of course, I've got my water lines. You've seen those already. I've got my power, a couple extension cords, a few adapters, uh, some jacks and jack plates and stands and stuff, some more nitrile gloves, and of course some parts that go to my weight distribution hitch. All of these things go on this side. All right, now this is on the party side of the trailer. Um, I generally start by putting this in first because 
of its size and its shape, I lay it in. Then I start taking my aluminum folding table, and I highly recommend you get one of these. It weighs very little and it stores nice. Then my chairs. They're not great, but they don't weigh much and they do store pretty easily. My Anderson levelers, of course. And then a few odds and ends. But that's basically what we use and how we store it. You want to be one important factor is you want to keep the weight pretty evenly distributed. And a lot of the things that I don't put in here, such as my fire pit, my blackstone, some of the heavier DeWalt tools, I keep in my truck because I really don't want to put any more weight on the hitch with this couple's camper than I have to. All right, so we're all packed up now. We're pretty much ready to go, and next week we're going to be on the road for a week. It's going to be a lot of fun. In just a few moments, Linda's going to be back inside, and she's going to show you a few more items. So if you watched last week's video, you know that we uh, made some changes to this cabinet under the TV. Um, but also, this cabinet under the stove is just kind of a big, wide open space. And I store things like my Instant Pot and pans under there, but I also store things like my um, cutting boards and my dish rack. And I found that while traveling and while we were stationary, every time I pull one thing out, everything just kind of fell over in there. So I found these at Ikea and they are bakeware organizers and there are two of them for around $5. So we went ahead and installed one of these under the cabinet. So this is a pretty simple modification. Um, the only thing we did is add some blocking material underneath so that when we screwed this down, it was screwing into something besides the bottom of this cabinet, which is pretty thin. Okay, so the next modification is what to do with the trash. Now we do have this large collapsible green um, trash can that we use when we're cooking or outside. It folds down, I hold it down with binder clips and it goes behind the sofa. Or um, if we're outside cooking or out during the day, we keep it outside and I just use the binder clips to kind of keep the plastic trash bags inside of it. But at night, there's not much floor space in here. So I don't like bringing it in at night. We usually will bag up the trash, take it to the dumpster at the end of the day, or um, just lock it inside the truck. But I wanted something inside also. So this is what we did. Um, so I'm gonna walk you through kind of real quick on this. It's very similar um, to uh, some of the other modifications that we've done in here. We did cut some blocking to go underneath again. And then because there is this quarter inch uh, gap, uh, we did put a quarter inch piece of plywood down here just so when we installed the drawer glides, it would come out over the edge without scraping anything. We got 22 inch full extension drawer glides and um, screwed those down. And we then got a piece of uh, a half inch plywood and cut it down to approximately five inches wide by about 20, 22 inches deep. And then we screwed the drawer glide to that. So now that comes back and forth. We also kind of cleaned up the edges a little bit by adding some shoe molding and then painting it. Now the trash can is a slim trash can and I found this at Big Lots. Now, what I liked about it is the bottom actually pops off. So we could go ahead and screw the bottom to the um, wood platform. And then I could put the uh, plastic uh, can on top of that. Now, my original thought was just to screw the trash can directly to the wood and put some silicone around the screw so nothing would leak. And then uh, just make sure I only was using really paper trash or empty bottles, cans, things like that. Um, I really like this modification. We're really excited to see how this works on our next trip. This spot at the end too, I haven't decided what I'm going to do here yet, but I'm going to attach something or put something in here to give me a little bit more storage. Um, okay, so that pretty much wraps up our video today. Um, we are planning on a trip. Unfortunately, it is the south and um, there's a lot of severe weather recently. Um, so we're hoping we can get our trip in and avoid all that. Um, we're going to uh, have some travel videos. We're going to start uh, doing the tests on our battery and solar as part of our boondocking experiment. And we have some uh, new products that we're going to try and test out and let you know how those work. So if you'd like to see more, please remember to like and subscribe. And Desi here always wants you to hit that notification bell. Thanks for watching. Oh, you want me to come out again?
You ready? No, no. B-roll of you trying to climb out. Oh, now I have to look good at it. It's not that easy. 